Hey everyone, it's Ryan. It is Wednesday, February 18th, and this is the Big East Rundown for the College Basketball Place. The idea behind this is I'm going to run through all of uh, the different picks for every day for the Big East. Um, so for Wednesday, we've got three picks that I'm going to go through. Uh, Georgetown at South Florida, Providence at Louisville, and Notre Dame at West Virginia. The idea is uh, you can get these picks if you want to read it, or you can just watch the video. Hopefully we'll give you some different information within each one, but uh, we'll see. Anyways, uh, if you guys like the name, like the idea, let us know in the forums. Uh, some feedback would be great. So without further ado, here's the Big East Rundown. 2009 has not been kind to the Hoyas. Uh, they went 1-7 and seven in January. They're 1-2 and two right now in February, but their two losses have come in overtime to Cincinnati and Syracuse. Now, the way they played at the end of the Syracuse game, coming back from a 16-point deficit to force overtime, I'm very impressed. I mean, they're a very young team. I think they have the potential to do a lot. I don't know if it'll necessarily happen this year, but the fact that they've changed their starting lineup and they're going to have all five of them return next season, I think is a huge thing. Georgetown has had the toughest schedule in the country. They've got a top 50 RPI, and they've got an overall record of 13-10, and 10, but a Big East record of 4-8. and eight. That's only good enough to put them in 12th in the Big East right now. They've got four players scoring in double digits, but they're led by their front court in Dewan Summers and Greg Monroe. Summers is averaging 14.3 points per game and is shooting over 40% from beyond the arc, while Monroe is averaging 13.1 points per game and is grabbing 6.6 .6 rebounds per game. Now let's take a look at South Florida. They have an RPI of 153 and the 30th toughest schedule in the country. Their overall and Big East records are losing overall, unfortunately. Uh, their overall record is 8-16, and 16, while their Big East record is 3-9. and nine. Their three Big East wins have come from DePaul twice and Marquette once when they, uh, when they barely escaped in 57-56. They've got two players averaging in double-digit points per game, but their real star is Dominique Jones, who is averaging 18.4 points per game, 5.3 rebounds per game, and 4 assists per game. The current line has Georgetown as a five-point favorite, and quite frankly, I'm a big fan of that. I, I like the Hoyas right now. I mean, I know they've been terrible recently, but I think the end of the Syracuse game showed a lot. I think they're going to be able to come into South Florida and do a lot more than they have in the last couple of years. They've struggled with South Florida for some reason, even when they had Jeff Green, Roy Hibbert, and Jonathan Wallace on the team. Um, they've gone 2-1 and one against, the, against the Bulls since uh, they've joined the Big East, but I think they're going to be able to pull it off. I think they're going to be able to win by five and end this home, this home court advantage that, uh, that has gone on with the Bulls and the Hoyas. Next game up in the Big East rundown is Notre Dame at West Virginia. Both teams right now are trying to fight their way off the bubble and secure their spot in the NCAA tournament. We'll see what actually happens. Uh, Heron Goatee has been as hot as anybody in the Big East. He's averaging a double-double, and he's pulled it off in every single Big East game so far. The Mountaineers have been on fire. They just put an end to, uh, to Villanova and their streak. So we'll see who wins, uh, but let's take a look at how they compare. Notre Dame snapped a seven-game losing streak with a huge upset over Louisville. They've got an RPI right now of 74, and they've got the 42nd toughest uh, schedule in the country. Their overall record is 14-10, and 10, but they've got a losing Big East record of 5-7. and seven. Their key players are Luke Herringote and Kyle McElarney. Herringote is one of, if not the most dominant big men in, uh, in the Big East. He's averaging 24.4 points per game and 12.7 rebounds. McElarney is very dangerous from, the, uh, from beyond the arc. He's averaging 45%. Uh, with a three ball, and he's averaging 16.1 points per game. West Virginia is just as dangerous from beyond the arc, though. They've got Deshaun Butler, who's averaging just over 40% with the long ball, and Alex Ruoff, who's shooting just under 37%. Ruoff is also averaging 15.9 points per game, while Butler is averaging 18.3, uh, but he's also adding 5.8 rebounds per game. They've got the fifth toughest schedule in, in a top 20 RPI. They've got an overall record of 17-8 and, and a Big East record of 6-6. Six and six. It's important to note that their six Big East losses have come only to ranked opponents. West Virginia is also perfect on the season at home. Uh, they just stopped a really, really hot Villanova team, uh, and they've just been they've been on fire. They shoot great at home. Notre Dame, on the other hand, hasn't been great. Sure, they're on a two-game win streak, and they stopped Louisville. Fantastic. But then they followed that up with a, a less than stellar game against uh, against South Florida. They only beat them by ten. 
and they didn't really score that much in the last uh, in the last ten minutes of the game. Given the way these two teams are going, I think that West Virginia is going to be able to pull it off. Eight and a half points may seem like a lot, but not with what's on the line, uh, a March Madness uh, seed. Our third and final game for the rundown on Wednesday is Providence at Louisville. Providence has been a, a huge surprise to everyone this year. Uh, they're currently in sixth in the Big East, which is great for them. And Louisville has been great up until four four games ago. They've now they were perfect in Big East conference play, and then in the last four they've gone two and two. Providence is an RPI of 69 and strength of schedule of 51. They've got a winning record both overall and in Big East conference play of 16 and nine and eight and five respectively. Their key players are uh, for their backcourt are Efu Jacku and Brooks, who are averaging 13.7 points per game and 12.4 points per game respectively, and they're both shooting around 35% from beyond the arc. And their presence inside lies with Jeff McDermott, who's averaging 8.1 points per game and 8.9 rebounds per game. Louisville's strength lies within their front court. They've got Terrence Williams, Earl Clark, and Samardo Samuels, all averaging just over 12 points per game. Uh, Williams is also averaging 8.5 rebounds per game. Clark, 8.7 rebounds per game. And Samuels, 5 rebounds per game. Their overall RPI is 17, and they've got a strength of schedule of 20. Their overall record is 19-5, and, and their Big East record is an impressive 10-2. and two. The current line favors Louisville by 14, and quite frankly, it's not enough. Uh, Louisville has had some impressive games, and their front court is going to be too much uh, for Providence to handle. Providence is a great team. They've had a great season. I don't want to take anything away from them, but they haven't beat anyone notable yet, and Louisville is going to just be another team that is too much for them to handle. So this one I'm going to have to give to Louisville. So that's a Big East Rundown for Wednesday. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys like it, and we, uh, we can make this something that we do all the time. Uh, so like I said before, give us feedback in the forums. I'd love to know what you think, and hopefully we can make this uh, a daily occurrence. See you guys in the forums.